Hello there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining the Magix webinar here. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting started with you. This is meant to be a, a webinar style of experience. So uh, in order to ask questions, what you're, wanna get, what you're gonna wanna do is insert those into the chat. And uh, that way we can address those questions as we go. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just a quick little introduction. So uh, my name is Josh Benson. I lead the success efforts over here at Magix. And essentially what I do is I sit down with folks like yourself at all different levels of scale, everything from new startups all the way to uh, enterprises who are spending at the eight figure mark uh, per month on Facebook advertising. And essentially what I do is I, I listen to folks talk about the challenges that they're looking to overcome and the goals that they've set, and I help them to get to that next level. So that's what I do. I help people get to their next level. As a result of these uh, conversations I've had with many different folks, I've been able to identify some, uh, some moving parts that are absolutely essential for success with uh, Facebook and with Magix. So we're gonna cover those concepts on our, uh, what I call the Safari tour. So the, the Safari tour is essentially an experience where you're gonna get to see all the different moving parts of Magix. We're gonna touch on each of those different components and we're gonna do it in the context of what folks who regularly use Magix, uh, how things uh, typically play out for them and what kind of thought processes they typically go through. Uh, I am trying out a, a few new adjustments to the webinar on this particular call. So uh, I, I have a, a high hopes that uh, this is gonna be a uh, positive adjustment. So uh, I look forward to your feedback. Uh, by the way, uh, we are always uh, open to hearing your feedback. Uh, we do take feedback on a regular basis and we consider that on a weekly basis with our, with our, our whole team. So I invite you to uh, always pass that along to our live chat team. You can also provide reviews for us on places like G2 and Captera. Okay, so uh, as far as myself, um, uh, I live in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I have a, a, a wife and a couple of kids. And um, uh, every day uh, I work with folks who are looking to increase their success with Magix. And uh, uh, as for Magix itself, Magix is an operation that started as an agency. Uh, we have been servicing all kinds of different folks. And over time, we've been building tools to help our own efforts. And over time, those tools grew. And we realized, hey, you know, other folks could benefit from this. And so that's where Magix the app came from. That's what we're going to be primarily focused on on our tour today. Now, uh, we have other solutions that we offer, uh, a grand total of six, actually. So in addition to the app, uh, we also offer do it for me and do it with me services. So if you need some assistance with getting things started, or if you're tired of managing a certain ad account and you'd like for us to do that for you, uh, those managed services are available. We also offer Sparkle, which Sparkle is a service to take care of your, uh, your graphic production. Uh, essentially, if you need images, videos, animations, things like that, we can produce those for you. So that's where uh, Sparkle can come into play to uh, advance your, your creative effort. Uh, hand in hand with that is our AI copywriter, which is a tool that will generate copy for you. And then we also have Magix Cloud Tracking, which is a solution to fix those iOS 14 challenges and restore your confidence in your Facebook numbers. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the app itself and I'm going to take you first into what it's like to log into the platform and go ahead and get started. So we'll do that now. And uh, just bear with me while I jump in. So Magix is a system that uh, works with both Facebook and Google. Well, we're primarily focused a little bit more on Facebook, uh, but we're in the process of adding our functionality for uh, Google as well. That's always, you know, we're, so we're always expanding and growing and changing. And uh, oh, I think I may have broken something. Uh, so just stand by. I'm just gonna go ahead and re-log in. I think I have some issues with my cookies here. <laughs> Either that or if the app is down, uh, this may be an extremely short webinar. <laughs> But uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and give this another try here. Uh, let's see. 
if it makes you feel any better, we do have an uptime of over 99.99%, I believe. Uh, that's the last time I saw the statistics there. Yeah, there we go. It was a problem on my end. Looks like we're logging in just fine here. Okay, so I'm going to draw your attention to the bar on the left. On the bar on the left, we have four core offerings. We have the essentials, which these are tools to uh, essentially visualize uh, how things are working. Uh, we have our, I think of it as like the pilot seat in an airplane. We have our instruments and we have our, 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 our dashboards and they help us to better understand where our efforts are resonating and where we need to make adjustments. Next is your targeting panel. Inside of targeting, we have a suite of reports that help us to better understand the success of our targeting and also to uh, find new targets with our audience launcher and audience studio tools and put new ads in front of those targets. So helps us to move the needle on our targeting effort. Next is the creative suite. And the creative suite gives us better insights on how, our, how well our creative efforts are resonating. And then last but not least, uh, we have our automation tools, which our automation tools are used to uh, put in place our best practices and enforce them uh, through uh, a system that's faster than humanly possible so that we can focus on other things that are more worthy of our time and attention. So these four core offerings are uh, what constitutes magics. And ultimately what we wanna do is we wanna serve you with insights and then we want to make it easy to execute on those insights. So that's how the magics, that's how the, ma the, the magic of magics works. Now I wanna clarify, you know, it, what exactly does the magic uh, do for me? So here's what it is. I want to be very clear that this is this is not in itself a money printing machine. You know, it's not like oh, I sign up for this and you know, uh, if I put in hundred dollars, then two hundred dollars comes out. You know, that may be your experience, but um, at the end of the day, this is not a a, a magic diet pill. Okay, uh, this is more like a magic sword, and uh, this magic sword equips you to uh, do. Uh, you know, lots of amazing things on the four battlefields of your advertising. Those four battlefields are going to be the offers that you produce, the creatives that you uh, represent those offers with, the people that you target with those creatives and offers, and then the buyer experience that you give these folks to journey from cold to sold. Those are your four battlefields. And to the degree that you succeed on those four battlefields, results in where you are with your numbers, with your success on Facebook advertising, okay? So anytime your numbers are not where you want them to be, at the end of the day, it falls on you to figure out, okay, I have these four battlefronts and I have a bottleneck somewhere. Somewhere we are losing the battle. If we wanna get our numbers in a better place, we've gotta understand the damage reports and then make a, a strategic adjustments until we're winning the battle, right? So magics is the magic sword that helps us on each of those four battlefronts to help us get to our next level. So with that in mind, let me take you through the flow. So when I first log into magics, I've got my ARR dashboard. The ARR stands for acquisition, retargeting and retention. And the idea is that I can get kind of a summary uh, report of what's happening with my marketing funnel. You'll find throughout Magix as we explore the platform that uh, we consistently go back to this uh, marketing funnel. Uh, we respect that marketing funnel. We believe that understanding this funnel is essential to your success on Facebook. So you'll see it visualized many times in different ways. When we go into the ARR dashboard, we have it visualized like so. We actually divide up your ads according to that marketing funnel uh, through the classifications of prospecting, re-engagement, retargeting, and retention. And so that results in the visuals that we see here. So we can analyze that marketing funnel and see where our efforts are resonating and where there may be some strategic adjustment needed. Now, since uh, for some of you, this may be your first time stepping into the Magix dashboard, I should point out some of the components along the way. You'll notice there's a filter on the top left, which this enables us to slice and dice the data. So for example, if I only want to see my active campaigns, I can do that. And then I also have a look back window 
uh, setting on the top right so I can establish how far back I want to look in my data. So I can do look back windows, or I can just simply designate a historical period and evaluate the data of that time period. Great for doing month to month comparisons and uh, things like that. Okay. So with the ARR dashboard, I get my visual of my marketing funnel. I see where my efforts are resonating. And then this kind of provides clues for what kind of adjustments I want to make. We, um, we oftentimes will approach this uh, dashboard with some assumptions in mind. And I want to touch on those assumptions because they're going to tie into the automations that you're going to end up wanting to build. So uh, I've created a, a little visual here. It's super basic. Don't laugh at me. Well, OK, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for laughter. So you know what? If you want to laugh, you can laugh. It's a super basic dash uh, 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 little slide that I made here. So the, the concept is we have five different scenarios that we want to be thinking about when it comes to managing our ads. Uh, there is, first of all, in the middle, we have our break even. And our, our break even scenario is basically, OK, if I sell at this cost, then when everything is said and done, I did not make money, I did not lose money. So whether you're doing uh, lead generation or e-commerce or mobile app installs, we need to understand what is our break even. We also need to understand is break even okay? Is it bad or is it good? Depending on your business model, it may be, it may be any of those things. Uh, I, I've, uh, uh, you know, for example, if you're doing a subscription service where folks just pay a small monthly fee or an annual fee, then it's okay if you break even on the initial purchase, right? Because you make money on the recurring costs. Uh, whereas with something where you're just selling a one and done, then break even is bad, right? You're just treading water. So understanding your break even is essential for carving out your best practices for managing your ads and understanding whether you're winning or losing your battles across the four battlefronts we described earlier. When we talk about scaling our ads, we're talking about ads that are in our profit scenario, okay? So the thing that we need to understand about the, the, the Facebook platform is that there's a high degree of volatility, right? There are good days and there are bad days. And when we have good days, uh, typically we wanna take that into account as, okay, I, I was lucky today. And so the, the principles we might apply would be things like, okay, if uh, today was a lucky day, I'll want to increase the budget for today, or I'll want to uh, maybe duplicate some of the ads that did really well and see if we can replicate that success. On the flip side, if it's a bad luck day, that you know, I think of uh, you know, like if a, if you had a really bad storm go through your area and it was so bad that some of the stores in your area closed for the day, you know, we don't uh, blame the salespeople for failing us, right? We, we don't fire anybody because of a bad weather day. Uh, instead, we say, you know what, everybody, let's go home for the day and then we'll try again tomorrow, right? And so for this kind of scenario, we typically want to temporarily reduce the budgets or we want to uh, stop loss for the day. We'll pause the ads for today and we'll try again tomorrow. In our long-term profit scenario, that means we have uh, executed a good strategy. So we are winning on our four battlefronts on offer, creative, audience targeting, and the buyer uh, experience. And that tells us that um, things are good. So we wanna capitalize on that. And we might make some more permanent budget uh, adjustments. Tools like our, our ABO tool uh, are really good for this kind of scenario. Whereas on the flip side, if we have a bad trend, if we have consistently diminishing returns, we are consistently seeing numbers go down. This reflects bad strategy and we need to make strategic adjustment. So we can put, we put stop loss rules in place for this kind of context. We might stop ads, ad sets or campaigns, or maybe even the whole ad account. You know, many folks in the travel industry, for example, they completely cut their ads when uh, the pandemic hit because nobody was buying in that market. So we, we need to understand 
that uh, when there's bad strategy, it requires strategic adjustment in order to get those numbers up. So this is where magics can help us in across these different uh, uh, contexts. Uh, we want to identify each of these different scenarios, build automations that go according to that, and then watch the results and continue to make adjustments to our ads accordingly. So when I come back into Magics, now that I understand this framework, um, I, I want to get that insight. So let's do that. So we have our ARR dashboard, which tells us where our efforts are resonating. Overall, our ROAS is looking pretty darn good right here. Um, my break even is somewhere around two ROAS for this ad account. So we're doing good uh, across all the fronts. If there's anywhere where maybe we could uh, do potentially be doing better, it's probably our outbound CTR, which tells me out of the four battlefronts, um, probably our creative would where we'd want to spend the, the, the most time and attention, right? So we're, we're going to come back to that. Right now, we're still in data collection mode. So we've looked at the ARR dashboard. We're now going to look at Ads Manager 2.0. And inside of Ads Manager 2.0, here is where I can actually go about uh, seeing a little bit more information about my ads and, um, and also to manage them. So if I, if I want to get into actually working with the ads in some form or fashion, then I can uh, step into here. This is essentially a replacement for the Facebook Ads Manager dashboard. I can customize the columns that I've got visualized and I can save different perspectives. Uh, typically, most folks will have their most important metrics visualized by default, and then they'll have another list that has, you know, all the numbers that they want to be watching. So that and they switch will quickly switch between the two based on what perspective they want to see. And we can see our performance over time and what automations are currently managing the ads. So we can always verify those things. And so as I'm working with this, I would want to be going through looking for, okay, where is my performance good? Where is it bad? Where could we potentially make some adjustments? I can drill down into my campaigns and see where efforts are resonating. Looks like I've got a particular ad set that's not doing that hot. Uh, we spent 88 bucks and we've gotten no row as and only 42 clicks out of this guy. Whereas um, this other ad, you know, looking at some of the other ad sets, I've got much better performance than some of the others. So this might be a candidate for, maybe we would wanna go in and manage that asset and maybe we would wanna pause this guy or maybe we, we would wanna reduce the budget. So, you know, we can do all of our different adjustments right from here. And we can actually scroll down. You'll see there's tons of different options. And not only can I manage my ads right from here, but everything that's in this dropdown, these are all options in our automation tools. So anything you see in this dropdown, if you find yourself manually doing these things over and over, that's an opportunity to automate. Okay. One uh, component I do need to call out, we do have on some of our reports a smart filter and this will have additional options. Here I can slice and dice the view of Ads Manager 2.0 according to different perspectives. Like if I only wanna look at my retargeting ads or only look at the ads that are being shown to women, I can do that. And so that's how it works. We're still in data collection mode, so let's keep going. Now, Maybe for this particular ad set, I want to dive deeper into it and see what's going wrong. And uh, and by the way, uh, the storyline is a great place to do that. So for this context, you know, I think what would make the most sense here is to actually jump straight to this one, which we can do on our little triple dots over here. We can jump straight to that storyline. So the storyline tells us what's been happening with our our in this case our ad set. Uh, we get a seven day report that shows us what, um, uh, how things have been going. And looks like actually what's, what's happened here, uh, looks like this ad has not, this ad set has actually not been running. So it looks like somebody actually manually paused this one. We've probably got some automations at the ad level that, uh, that have paused the individual ads would be my guess. But this is one where we spent some money and we're just not getting results out of it. Um, so this one doesn't have a whole lot of information. I would probably 
in this context, I'd probably want to see, okay, so it looks like one of my coworkers has been working on this, and this is someone I would want to follow up on and say, okay, uh, tell me a little bit more about what's happening with this ad set. It seems like it's not going anywhere. What can we do here? Uh, maybe we'll step into a different one that's got a little bit uh, more action on it so we can get a better context of uh, what this particular dashboard does for us. So you'll notice there's this black bar going across the top. And so every time there's some kind of action taken, whether it's by a person in Facebook or an automation in Magix, either way, that action is going to be logged on the black bar on the top. And then you'll also notice uh, over on the right, I can configure my view across different timeframes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually specify, okay, let's actually look at the data over the last 30 days. Um, I'm wondering if my dashboard here is frozen. Let me let me refresh this page real quick so that we can get this visualized. But um, but as I'm going through these different dashboards, uh, essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think about my five scenarios from earlier: my my break even, my short-term success, my long-term success, my short-term uh, profit loss and long-term profit loss scenarios. And I want to see where my ads are falling within uh, those five scenarios. And I'm, I'm looking to make either short-term or strategic adjustment uh, across the different ads. So um, you'll also notice that there's a place where I can go back and review previous weeks of performance. So we can actually uh, review and contrast those. Uh, inside of this, you'll actually see there's a there's a color marker for each one, which gives us a sense of the performance of of um, of each of those previous weeks. So we can compare and contrast and just go down the line and uh, see how the trends have played out long term. Um, I don't want to hold up the webinar for whatever reason. My browser is not loading this page, so let's just keep going. Uh, I had mentioned the uh, creative analysis is something that I want to do here. Uh, I had noticed earlier that my outbound CTR is not where I want it to be. I want that outbound CTR to be closer to about one and a half percent at least, if not higher. Uh, so, so essentially, what I'm what I'm looking to do is I'm looking for opportunity uh, across uh, my different ads. So first up across the top, I've got my different bars. And these are telling me the performance of my different kinds of creatives, my images, my videos, my carousels, and my dynamic ads. And so here I can get a sense of where our efforts are resonating the most. And it looks like across the board, this past seven days, my outbound CTR across the board is just not where I want it to be. So this tells me that uh, there is room for improvement on the creative battlefield. Something between our creatives and our folks that we're showing our ads to, something is just not clicking to the degree that I want it to. Now, when I visualize the performance of all the different creatives on my color graph, uh, I can adjust this perspective based on different metrics. Currently, I'm looking at cost per click. If I wanted to look at, uh, say, ROAS, that's uh, one of my fundamental metrics for this ad account. So here I'm actually seeing some correspondence between the amount of spend and the amount of ROAS that's being generated. And I, and I see, okay, so this one that's way deep into the overspend territory, this guy is sitting at a, let's see, he's at a ROAS of 2.19. So he's about, break, he's in that break even scenario. And uh, his outbound CTR is under a percent. So what this tells me is if I could get that outbound CTR up, I would probably get my ROAS into my profit scenario instead of my break even. Let's look at some of these others. So here's a stronger one. This the ROAS on this one's actually pretty decent. It's 4.14. And I see that outbound CTR, look at there, it's above 1%. Okay, so there seems to be at least a little bit of course of correlation here. Here's another where my ROAS is 3.6. Now my, my outbound CTR on this guy is actually 0.57. So what this tells me is that when people do click this ad, they're more likely to convert. So this one's actually doing a good job of getting me quality clicks, but, um, but there's something still not quite right in the resonance. I could do better than this. I could do better than this. 
And I know because my outbound CTR is much less on this one compared to some of my others. It's just that folks who do click it, they actually pay money. So we're on to something. We just need to make a few adjustments. So this would be an ad uh, creative that I'd want to consider making some, uh, some tweaks to until I get that where I want it to be. Here I see another ad that has the exact opposite issue. My ROAS is in my break-even scenario, but my outbound CTR is higher than the others that I've looked at. So this one is the opposite. It's not a quality, uh, it's not performing in terms of quality, it's performing more in terms of quantity. Uh, it gets more people to click, but fewer of those people who do click end up purchasing. So somewhere between these two creatives, I've, I've probably got all, about all of the moving parts as far as what's actually resonating with folks. So I would wanna analyze these two in greater detail with my um, graphic design team. And so this is a, kind of a feel of how you could go about working through the creative analysis. Now down beneath, I have my creative performance trends. And so the numbers on this, by the way, they correlate with what you see over on these creatives. So we can actually hover over these. See, there's a little number two in the top right. So if I wanted to analyze creative number two, I can do that. Just like so. And I'm going to read. Eh, we'll, we'll just keep going here. So uh, here we go. So creative number two. So it looks like it's um, it's definitely got some good performance when it does. When it, it has off days, it has good days, and it has bad days. So. Uh, overall, it's not a bad creative. I mean, it's it's doing well for me on some days, like here on the 4th of July, or, or excuse me, uh, the 24th of June, uh, we actually got 3,600 in revenue compared to only 300 in spend. So we've actually breached uh, 11 ROAS on, on a good day with this. So this tells me we're doing a lot right with this creative, but the question is what's happening with this drop-off period where we're spending money and nothing's happening. Either something's off with my tracking or um, we need to do a better job with either the creative itself or the folks we're putting it in front of. So here I'm, I'm hunting for clues. I'm looking for ways to increase my results on the battlefield. Last, uh, you'll notice on the bottom, we have our AI feature tags. And these tell us uh, some things that are showing up as concepts in our ads. Uh, we have a, a system that goes through and tries to identify components within the ads. And uh, in this case, uh, anytime we're talking about machine learning things, they always surface either dirt or hidden gems, and we have to dig through the dirt to get to the gems. So when I see things like no tags found or text or cosmetics, these things are, are all dirt to me. So I ignore them and keep going. Uh, but what I am interested in is appliance. Okay, so I'm getting 12, out of all the ads that have this tag, they represent 12.7% of the revenue and only 9% of the spend. So this is a profit scenario right here that I'm seeing. There's some kind of correlation here potentially. So if I wanted to further analyze into this, I could go into my smart filters on the color graph and my AI feature tags are right here. So I can show just the ads who have that particular feature tag and dive deeper into those. Something about appliances is resonating with my audience that I'm targeting with these creatives. So that would be something to dive a little bit deeper into. That might actually inspire uh, my next batch of creatives that I launch down the road. Now we can do something similar with our ad copy. So we have not only ad uh, creative insights, we also have uh, ad copy insights. And with my ad copy insights, I'm doing many of the same actions here. I'm going through and I'm seeing all of the different copies that I have, and I can see how they're performing. And then down beneath, I can see my different kinds of ad copy. These are organized by length, short, medium, and long. Short is basically the length of a tweet. Medium is basically the length of two to three tweets. And then long is anything that's longer than that. So that's like the equivalent of somebody ranting on politics on Facebook, right? <laughs> So uh, I see that out of all my different approaches, my medium copy overall is doing the best. It's got the highest conversion rate. Uh, I also see that um, uh, we have some comparisons as far as emojis and whether there's links in the, in the copy. 
And then on the bottom right, I see my top phrases in my converting copy. So looks like a sale that I ran was very successful. Uh, I'm seeing some, uh, you know, obviously when I run sales, we expect that, right? You know, the people are going to resonate with those. So um, I can tell that my customers care about savings, they care about quality, they care about customer service. And if I were to dive deeper into the phrases, we can find some additional nuance. Okay, so now I've assessed some things with my ads. I've identified that several of my ads are in my profit scenario and several of them are not. And at this point, uh, I'd probably want to start considering some automations that I would want to build. So I'm going to quickly touch on that. Inside of automations, we've got three different kinds of automations. We have the tactics and strategies, which I kind of put those together. Uh, but um, there are some differences between the two. We'll get into that. There's also custom automation, which custom automation is kind of like making food at home. You know, nobody's there to tell you what to do. You can make whatever you want, and it's up to you as to whether it tastes good. Uh, if you burn it, it's on you. Uh, that's custom automation. And then the last kind is the autonomous budget optimizer, which is kind of like having a media buyer in place managing your ads uh, budgets, um, uh, you know, essentially doing that faster than humanly possible. Uh, that's a, a tool that's really great for strategic management uh, of, of your budgets. So when I think about my, my different scenarios here for break even, stop loss, and profit, I want to build different kinds of automations here, okay? So for example, a stop loss uh, uh, short term or, or you know, a, a, essentially a rule for bad luck. Uh, so how can I head off bad luck? Uh, here's an example. So I could go into my stop loss at the individual ad level. And I would say that uh, what we're really looking for here is that the fish are not biting. Now, I know a lot of folks would immediately want to build an automation that targets uh, essentially the, the bottom of the funnel. But uh, essentially what I, what I want to propose here is that we don't necessarily need to go to the bottom of our funnel in order to identify a bad luck day. Uh, not to say that the bottom of funnel can't inform that, it certainly can, but um, essentially we can look at um, outbound clicks actually would be, would be a really good one to look at here. There we go. You should be able to see my screen. Okay. So we'll go into those uh, into this automation based on outbound clicks. So there's some advantages to using outbound clicks. Uh, I would say the, the, the biggest impact of using outbound clicks is that it's on platform, which means it, the feedback is instant uh, from Facebook and there's no impact from iOS 14 uh, kinds of challenges. Uh, you know, not to mention uh, Facebook nowadays is sitting on bottom of funnel data for up to 72 hours before they report it. So uh, outbound clicks has tons of advantages for heading off bad luck. So this is what our automation looks like. If I've gotten zero outbound clicks and my spend has been over $6.02, then we're gonna take our ball home for the day and we're gonna try again tomorrow. That, that's essentially what this automation is saying. Now, uh, you may be wondering, where did this $6.02 come from? Uh, essentially what this is saying is that uh, an analysis of your ad account was done and our system's recommendation is that $6.02 is what's gonna make sense for this automation. So if you're not sure what number to set down, this is not a bad choice. Is it the perfect choice? Uh, not necessarily, it's something to test. Uh, but what you need to understand here is that this is essentially uh, functioning as your runway. Uh, your ads are kind of like airplanes that need to take off. And what this is uh, functioning is, as is the runway for those airplanes. We are giving this ad $6.02 of runway. And if the plane doesn't fly by then, then um, uh, we're just gonna ground the plane for the day. We're gonna say it's a bad weather day. We'll try again tomorrow. So that's essentially uh, one approach that we could take to stop loss. I'll show you one more automation. Another example, this would be the opposite scenario 
So this one is looking at a long-term budget optimization. So inside of uh, my, this strategic recipe, here I'm seeing uh, an automation that's going to manage uh, my budgets. The increase is for good trends and the decrease is for bad trends. And you can see that we're looking at a couple of different timeframes to make sure that things are flowing smoothly. We look at the ROAS over the last three days. We look at the ROAS over the last seven days. We make sure our frequency isn't too high. And we make sure that the ads have at least three days of runway. So this is a time runway uh, on the ads. And we, so we have 72 hours on both the increase and the decrease. And so the idea is that if my ads are profitable, they're in my profit scenario, I wanna make strategic uh, increases. And you'll notice we are not resetting the budget here. This is a permanent change to the budget. Same thing with the decrease. When we have a trend of performance that's moving either into our profit or into our stop loss, we, we want to ad adjust with that trend. And so that's essentially uh, some thoughts around how automation would play out. We're gonna talk about the ABO tool at the very end here. Uh, so don't think I've forgotten about that. But uh, in our workflow of working through magics, these are some easy strategic adjustments we would make based on the data we've collected so far. So now that I have set up some automations to manage my existing ads, my next thought is, okay, so I've identified some ads that are not resonating at the creative level. We could do better than that. So what we wanna do is start getting some better insights on our targeting and start thinking about what audiences we wanna target and what ads we wanna put in front of those people. So to do that, we're gonna to need to go into our targeting panel. We have inside of the hidden insights, some great uh, analytics that are gonna help us to better understand where our efforts are resonating. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump into that. Our first step is into the targeting insights. And here I can see insights across my full funnel. Now, we first start off with a slice of each of our components in our, in our marketing funnel, our prospecting, our re-engagement, our retargeting, and our retention. You'll notice these blue numbers here. So these are hot links to take us to those ads inside of Facebook Ads Manager. So here, for example, I see, hey, my broad targeting, it's in my profit scenario. So maybe I wanna go and look at what we're doing well uh, with those 16 ads there. Or on the flip side, here I've got uh, in my retargeting, uh, I'm sitting at a 0.6 on uh, my visitors here. So this particular one is not resonating and I'd wanna dive deeper into that. Whereas my high intent visitors, this one's doing fantastic. So my visitors, audience is dragging down my retargeting by two points of ROAS. That's huge. So we needed to get to the bottom of that and see what's going on. Going further down. So we can also see how well our landing pages are performing. So landing pages in general, they need to continue the promise of the ad. So if the ad talked about something, the landing page needs to pick up right where the ad left off, right? Uh, inside of our landing pages, we can see which ones are doing uh, the best for us. I'm just going to adjust this guy here. There we go. Uh, so uh, kind of the concept here is we see which of our landing pages are resonating for us. And uh, if I was looking at this, I'd want to look at ROAS, of course. You know, bottom of funnel is going to be the most important. Uh, I might also want to think about uh, not only my outbound CTR, but also my ads to cart. Uh, after all, what's the next logical step from uh, looking at the landing page? We want them to add to cart, right? Or we want them to start filling out a form or whatever our conversion mechanism is. So we want to take a look at those things. So then let's keep going. Here I can get a variety of other insights across my targeting. Is expansion helping me or is it hurting me? Which audience sizes and reaches are getting me the, the best traction? If I were to try and experiment with um, 
advertising only to, only to folks on Wi-Fi, I would be able to compare folks on Wi-Fi versus folks who are uh, on whatever internet connection. My different lookalike percentages, you know, so these are all parameters I want to be considering uh, as I look at my ads uh, and think about who I want to be targeting. I also notice on the bottom left, so the ERFM module, this ties back to some uh, the audience templates. We have an audience launcher. So uh, just uh, keep that in mind. But uh, essentially the idea is uh, if you're using our special audiences, you'll want to see the performance of those. And so we have a special place to go and review the performance of those. Uh, let's keep moving. So not only do we have our targeting insights, we also have our geographic insights. Now, this is especially helpful if you're advertising on a global uh, stage, but even if you're only advertising in the United States or, or one country, wherever that might be, uh, that's okay because there's actually still some utility here. So I can actually drill down into a country and see the individual regions or states and see where I'm getting traction. So this would tell me how well I'm resonating. And, uh, and, this, and if I wanted to conduct experiments where I'm trying to focus the targeting, like maybe I might try running some ads that are specifically targeted to California, since I know historically California is a state that spends a lot of money. Most California is the best performer for many folks. Maybe I might try some California specific creatives to see if I could bump up that outbound CTR that I know uh, is gonna correlate with my bottom of funnel performance. Now, something to keep in mind uh, with reports like these, since they touch on demographic data, Facebook typically will mask the conversion data. Uh, the only exception to that is if it's an on Facebook purchase, like their Facebook marketplace, or if it's an offline conversion uh, detail that uh, uh, is uploaded as an offline conversion. So this is actually an interesting place where our Magix cloud tracking solution comes into play because that's what, it, whenever our system catches um, conversions that Facebook missed, it feeds them in as offline conversions. So you'd actually be able to visualize those purchases, whereas normally Facebook would mask that data so you can't see it. So just a little bit of a tip. Either way, I'm able to see the demographics of uh, what's performing, where our efforts are resonating. And this would clue me in on what ages uh, are resonating or, or, or also which, uh, which genders are resonating. And here I can see, looks like uh, women in particular are, are loving what we've got. Uh, looks like um, we get lower CPMs with the men. So very, very interesting. So this would be something to dive into uh, deeper, try out some more experiments to see if we can get those CP CPMs down with women and increase conversion rates with men. Let's keep moving. We also have our auction insights. So it's important to remember at the end of the day, Facebook is an auction. Your ads are competing with everybody else's ads, right? And somebody's gonna win that auction and somebody's gonna lose that auction. And we wanna be winners, right? We wanna win that auction. If you wanna be a winner, then we need to dive deeper into the auction insights and understand them. So looking inside of my auction insights, I can compare and contrast the different approaches to the auction. Am I doing CBO or ABO? I can compare the performance between the two in, in, in the learning and out of learning. I can see which ones are resonating. Uh, it's very interesting to me. Some people get better performance in learning, some get better out of learning. So that's something you'll wanna test my different approaches to ad delivery, automatic versus manual bidding. Am I beating the Facebook algorithm with my manual bids? We have, by the way, we have a bid testing tool to, uh, to help with that, sets up the whole test environment there. My different types of ads, if I'm running dynamic ads, then I'm gonna be able to contrast their performance with the regular ones. So it looks like that might be an opportunity for us to try out. We don't have any dynamic ads running here currently. And here I see that um, uh, my advertising across the different platforms and devices. So the red numbers here, by the way, these indicate that my performance previously was better than it was this, this period. So what I'm seeing here across the board is a, a, a trend of declining outbound CTR. And what this is telling me is 
we need to make new creative, uh, like a lot of new creative, because the overall trend is not looking good. Uh, I'd probably want to expand the view a little bit further if I was doing a serious analysis here. But uh, so far, the indication is uh, our ads are losing traction, and we need to serve up some new creative. Um, I can also compare and contrast engagement ranking, conversion ranking, and quality ranking, and then see how much I'm spending across frequencies. OK, so we've done our analysis, and now we want to go through the process of launching some new ads. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we have two different ways to launch ads. We can do Audience Launcher or we could do Audience Studio. Um, the difference between the two, Audience Launcher uses my conversion data, my first party data to create new audiences. And Audience Studio uh, takes a combination of my first party data and Facebook data so that I can uh, re essentially remix my first party data with, uh, with that data to discover new audiences. Let's go through Audience Launcher first, just so you can see what that experience looks like. So inside of Audience Launcher, I can see essentially a vending machine of audiences. Now, uh, the different uh, capacities available here uh, are a little overwhelming. So to, to simplify that, what I'm gonna do is use some keywords. So maybe, for example, if I noticed that video conversions were outperforming everything else, I'd probably want to build an audience off of that first party data. So maybe I'll do that. And maybe if I if I had noticed that uh, I've got good ROAS from my uh, conversion rankings on the targeting report, then maybe I'll want to build an audience off of people who are engaging. By the way, we can also launch Google audiences in case you didn't know. There's a quick little shortcut there to see just the ones that uh, can launch on Google. Let's keep going. Magis is gonna create that structure for my campaigns automatically, but if I wanna use existing campaigns instead or create new ones, I can do that. I'm just gonna keep going with the Magic structure. Now, I have a, diff a couple of different ways of how I can go about launching ads. So um, if I wanted to use my existing ads, I can do that. And you know, I'd actually want to look at a shorter time period here, just for the purposes of our of our webinar. We've been doing seven days throughout the whole uh, uh, journey here, so that's what we'll stick with. So here I can rank my ads based off of performance. Currently, I'm grading those by ROAS, but I can rank them by something else if I prefer. But right now I'm looking at ROAS and I see that we had a 4th of July sale and that one did really well. Uh, got tons of purchases from it. So maybe, uh, you know, reality is uh, we don't want to reuse that one because the sale's probably over, but uh, maybe we might want to do an extension of the sale. So that might serve up some uh, thoughts on uh, new creative. But ultimately I can take some ads, like here's this guy, Five, uh, five row as on this guy, and maybe I'm, I'm gonna use him. Now we can actually so, uh, separate the creative from the ad copy and then mix and match those. And that's what the creative clusters does. Here I can visualize, okay, here's my different con uh, converting creative. And then here's my different converting ad copy. The best are at the top and to the left overall. And if I wanna create that combination, then I can just simply click that little plus sign there and that'll create that combination. You'll notice on some of these that uh, there's a color box here and then a number on the top right corner. So the color box tells me I'm already running this combination on some of my uh, existing ads. And it's also telling me that there are 43 potential ad sets that could be running this ad, but they currently do not. So if I wanted to quickly do that, if I select that, that'll actually, when I get to the very end, I'll have the option to fill in those ad sets with that ad if I want to. We can also create ads off of our Instagram and Facebook posts. That turns the organic post into a paid ad and it keeps all the social engagement, the social proof stays on that ad. We can create new ads or we can bring up our purple bar on the right and we can plug in ad IDs or post IDs. Okay, let's keep going. 
So now I want to uh, I want to customize these audiences depending on what audiences I selected at the beginning impacts uh, what's available here. So inside of my audiences, I can configure who we're going to put those ads in front of based on country, region, DMA, or even custom locations such as zip codes, for example. And since this is a lookalike audience, I'll, I'll uh, be able to configure the percentage there all the way up to 20%. Now, um, I can actually duplicate these audiences to do some A-B testing. So maybe for some of these lookalikes, I'll do a different percentage on those. So it's really easy to configure these audiences the way that we want them to go, just like that. Okay, and so that covers Audience Launcher. We'll now touch on Audience Studio. Most of the experience with Audience Studio is the same. It's just a little bit different uh, when we get into the first screen. So a couple of things are happening here. Since we're gonna be remixing our first party data with our uh, Facebook uh, targeting data, uh, we've got a report that tells us which of our audiences have been resonating. So we could grab one of these audiences or, or more, and then we can hit this tab on the top right to bring in that Facebook data, just like so. And then we can drag and drop these to add in layers. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna compare the intersections to the base audiences and pull out that slice of pie, just the folks within my lookalikes that also have the hobby craft and uh, uh, interest and also have paid Facebook in the last 90 days. And so I get a more hyper-targeted audience as a result. And so that's the audience studio. Okay, so I'm gonna launch all these new ads and it kind of raises the question of, you know, if I'm gonna be launching all these ads, I sure would like to be able to do a creative test to um, identify which of these ads are winners and which ones are losers. I don't wanna just throw a bowl of spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks, right? I wanna actually see uh, initial signs of uh, performance is what I'm gonna be looking for. So instead of blowing all my budget uh, on ads that I don't even know if they're gonna perform, what I could do instead is set up essentially a creative test now, here's the thing. It's been historically very difficult to do creative tests on Facebook. Uh, one of the, the, the challenges of, uh, of, the, of the Facebook platform is that it's not fair. It, it spends tons of money on some of the ads, and it only spends a little bit of money on some of the other ads. And, and that's not fair. It, it's really hard to do a scientific comparison apples to apples in that kind of scenario, right? So um, what we wanna do is we wanna even out the playing field. We want a level playing ground where every ad has a fair chance to succeed and every ad is judged by its merits instead of which one Facebook just arbitrarily picked to get tons of spend. So what I wanna do is I wanna create an automation that'll do that for me. Uh, I have a template that I've created so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Feel free to uh, screenshot this if you want to. So here's what the automation does. It has three phases to it. It has a start rule. And this basically says, hey, if the test tube is not full on these ads that I want to creative test, then make sure those ads stay on. So even if somebody goes in and turns them off, this is gonna turn it right back on. The next phase is to pause the ad. And this is saying, hey, when this ad is done, when the test tube is full, we're gonna pause that ad. And then the last step is uh, now that the test is done, we wanna mark the winners, which of our ads passed our victory conditions. So inside of this automation, we're establishing that it's gonna add to the ad name, hashtag winner. So I know which ones are winners. So this automation will check to see that we have a sufficient number of impressions, the test tube is full, and then we have some options for victory conditions, CTR, cost per click, we could use all kinds of different metrics here. Ultimately, what we're measuring is the emotional connection of the ads that uh, compels 
uh, someone to click or to tap. Uh, and hey, I mean, if we get a purchase out of it, then hey, fantastic. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm measuring that emotional connection between my audience and my creative. And so that's why these victory conditions are on equal footing with actually getting a purchase. Okay, so this is how a traditional marketer would typically think about their ads as they navigate through the Magix platform. I'll touch on the autonomous budget optimizer. So this is a great tool to be using once we have the uh, you know the the strategy more or less hammered out the um, the autonomous budget optimizer is intended for ads that are ready to scale if they're not ready to scale if they're still in that testing phase then um, they're not ready for the abo tool so uh, let's just quickly talk through this abo tool and then we're going to wrap up here so essentially there's three phases to this uh, what we want to do is uh, first of all, we wanna make sure we're not running this on ads and testing. So typically what I do is I use my naming convention to, to reinforce this. So my campaign does not have creative test in the name. And we may wanna put other filters, but that's what I've got. Inside of the second section, what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm going to set down a budget ladder. And at the top of the ladder, my best performers is going to fit the top rung, and the best performers get the most budget. On the other hand, the worst performers, the ones that are at the bottom of the ladder, they get the least amount of budget. And so that's essentially how that plays out. The system segments this according to our sales funnel, and then we can prioritize based on whichever metric that we care about. Now, for right now, I've got ROAS, but maybe for outbound, maybe for acquisition prospecting, maybe what I want to optimize around maybe would be landing page views, for example. Uh, you could change that if you wanted to. Here's where that budget ladder exists, and we can make this ladder as big or, or small as we want. And so the idea is that we establish our parameters. This is where you would want to be thinking about our automation framework, right? So we're thinking about our stop loss and our, and our profit scenarios here. So we come back to this and say, okay, so my stop loss scenarios are here and then my, my profit scenarios are here. And the further we get into those profit scenarios, the more that uh, we're gonna scale. And so we would change the budgets accordingly. Now, if you're not sure what numbers to plug in, the system does uh, provide some smart defaults. They uh, they pop in when you first load. I've overridden those, but, um, but that's done. And so essentially we establish our budget ladder. The last component is where we set up our targeting parameters. So we again, we can use our metrics to decide how best to place the ads. So whereas the first part or, or the, uh, the, the previous part was going through how much we spend, this is configuring where that spend is going to go. So we can change the optimization of the targeting through the automation. OK, so this uh, concludes the Safari tour. Uh, I, I hope that this was helpful. Um, I imagine that there are one of two takeaways that has happened here. Uh, takeaway number one is that you saw this and felt like, oh, man, this was really um, overwhelming. This was too much. If, if, if that's how you're feeling, uh, that's okay. Uh, that's what our professional services is for. If you need some help with those things, you can reach out. Uh, on the other hand, if you came away from this feeling like, oh man, this looks great. I want to try this out. Uh, you'll notice on our main page, you can try this for free and see for yourself uh, the, the, the power of magics. Uh, we have uh, folks who can provide demonstrations of the product for you and give you a more personalized tour compared to what we've gone through today. If you'd like to get that experience, uh, just simply reach out to our live chat team and let them know that uh, you'd like to set up a demo and uh, we'll get one scheduled. Thanks so much for your time and attention. Uh, this has been uh, uh, very enjoyable. I, um, I see that... Um, uh, we've uh, you, all of you have been very patient. I went just a little bit over time on our call today, but I really appreciate you sticking around. Thanks so much. I wish you the very best of success on uh, Facebook. And um, uh, this is Josh Benson signing off. Thanks so much.